got mugged off, really. I mean, I only went in to get a couple of beers. So yeah, I, I'm no one to splash out, really, or indulge myself. It's just not my way. See, I was in this nice craft beer shop, right? I, I was just looking around. But not really, though. I mean, I was just in to get a couple of bottles of Peroni, but you can't outright come out and say something like that in an establishment of this sort. You've got to play the game. You've got to peruse. You've got to play the part of a man looking at a nice craft beer in a nice craft beer shop. The man who's just popped in for a wee look round, you know, listens to the bullshit maybe, tries a couple of samples, but at the end of the day, can't make up his mind and he'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> but doesn't leave without picking up a couple of bottles of Peroni. You know, because he's meeting a friend who isn't into the craft stuff <laughs> and we'd both laugh and depart as uh, respected equals. <laughs> Odds were already stacked against my mind. I wasn't dressed for the part. I wasn't wearing any cord for one, but I tried my best to make it work. I strolled around the store with shoulders back, you know, gave it a bit of confidence, a bit of swagger. <laughs> Uh, every now and again, uh, I'd pick up a bottle and peer at a label, you know, humming and awing, humming and awing, <laughs> giving the whole thing a bit of beans. Are you looking for anything in particular, sir? Sir? <laughs> he called me sir. Ah, uh, things are looking good. He's buying what I'm selling. He's none the wiser. Uh, ball's in my court. No, uh, I'm just looking round. You got anything good in at the minute? Fuck, why did I say that? Now I'm actually going to have to pretend that I'm interested in what he's saying. So the boy starts pulling bottles off the shelves, right, giving me the spiel, and I'm nodding along, playing my part. And we've got some spirits in at the moment, if you'd be interested. I, sure, why not? Obviously, I'm not interested, but it's all part of the elaborate dance, you know? <laughs> He says that gin's the big thing these days, which makes sense. I mean, Edinburgh's full of gin bars. Seems like in every corner there's a swanky new cocktail place opening up. Kira used to love going to places like that. Not me, though. No, I always felt a bit out of place. But that's what you do in relationships. You know, you do things you don't want to to make the other person happy. Anyway, the lad's chatting away and I'm starting to wonder how long I've been in here for. Thinking that I probably should have just sucked it up and gone to Tesco's. Would have saved me a lot of time and probably a lot of brain power. But then he mentions this gin that's really popular at the moment. Isla, the Hebrides, the land clings to the ocean in the teeth of Atlantic weather systems. Exploration of this stunning landscape led us to create this beautiful liquid in the endeavour of curiosity and passion for flavour. He was nowhere near done. Invigorated by the raw, natural environment, this gin is crafted with 22 locally sourced Islay botanicals, whatever the fuck that means, with notes of spearmint, wood sage, meadowsweet and white clover, to name a few. <laughs> oh, it has a really distinct flavour palette. It's crafted in a still that is the last of its kind, originally made for making whiskies, uh, crafted during the Second World War. Distilling the liquid takes over 17 hours to produce this unique, aromatic flavour. Fuck, he went on about it for so long, I said I'd end up buying a bottle just to get a sharp. <sighs> I was done playing the part. I wanted to go home. He'd won and I was ready to admit defeat. So he's wrapping up the bottle. And 30 fucking quid, is he having a laugh? But no, it's fine. Uh, fuck it, it's okay. So he's packing it up and putting it in a paper bag, which is no use to me because it's fucking pissing with rain outside, but it's fine. And he's still going on about it. You know, with most gins, you're all right with a slice of lime. Yeah, cool, slice of lime, no worries. I'm heading towards the door, ready to make my exit, finally. But you'd be better off with a slice of lemon, though.
What? The gin. It goes better with a slice of lemon. She said things weren't working. She said she needed some time to figure herself out. But I knew that was a lie. You could see it in the way she couldn't look me in the eye anymore. It was over and no amount of time was going to change that. I knew that was true. I could feel it deep in my bones somehow. She didn't love me. She said anymore, but come to think of it, I can't remember her ever saying it. Not once. I felt like my chest was quietly ripping open, my lungs caving in on themselves, my stomach was swallowing itself all, ready to regurgitate out into the open. Everything went dizzy and my head felt like it was going to implode. She didn't say much else. Just that she was sorry. When she left, I threw up in the toilet. Thick orange and pink vomit with chunks of carrot floating in the water. Not once can I remember her saying it. I suppose I should have seen it coming. She's coming round today to pick up the last of her things. It's weird that, you know, packing up the remains of her into a cardboard box. All traces of her now gone. Just memories left then, I suppose. Fuck, that sounded a bit gay. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't say that. Kira said, you know, it's homophobic. But I have no problem with the gays. I mean, like, I, I know a gay guy. Well, I don't really know him. He's like a, a mate of a mate's pal. I, I met him in the pub once. He seemed like a nice guy. Not that he wouldn't be nice, because, I, I mean... Uh, never mind. Things have been fine, though. I mean, different, but... It has to be expected, it's like, things change when you're on your own, but... No, I'm... I'm doing okay. No, really, I am. I do miss her, though. I mean, mostly I miss just having someone round. Yeah, I miss... telling her about my day and... her making me dinner. Coming home after a night out and lying in bed and just staring at her for ages. I miss her hair and her knees. I miss the wee tub of face cream she used to keep on the bedside table. Uh, and I miss the sex, uh, obviously. <laughs> it's strange, you know. Sometimes things feel okay. You know, I feel normal and, and whole and happy. But then I remember how things were before and, and now it isn't like that. So that I get confused as to which was better then or now. It's just different, I suppose. So, fuck it. And if things are a bit weird or a bit fucked right now, they'll get better. I know they will. And I'm not going to do something stupid like fucking kill myself. Kira was a bit worried about that, actually. I was like, I'm not that obsessed with you. <laughs> she didn't find that funny either. 
but I'm not going to do something like that. You know, uh, it's just not in my nature. You know, I'm not fucked in the head or anything. I'm not insane. All right. I, I, and it's okay to be sad about the fact that my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, broke up with me. I mean, it's fucking normal to feel like this. It's been three months since we last spoke. Well, uh, apart from the text that she sent me yesterday. Coming round to pick up my things tomorrow. Hope that's okay. I've started seeing someone, actually. Uh, not sure how serious it is, you know. It's too soon to tell, but... I feel... different. You know, I feel in control of the situation. <laughs> Things have been completely different since I met them, though. I mean, I, I'm a completely different person to who I was with Kira. But that's makes sense, you know. Uh, you change and adapt to who you're with. I was a completely different person before her. It's like, you don't notice it, but every few months we shed our skin like reptiles or something and become someone completely new. You know, I heard somewhere that every four years or something, all of the atoms or cells or something in your body, they change. Like you are physically a completely different person. It's kind of nice that. You know, a, a brand new person, a clean slate. I feel a bit like that recently, actually. You know, I feel like I've got a clean slate. It started in Tesco's, the one round the corner from Broughton Street, near all the gay bars at the top of Leaf Walk. It's one of those sweltering hot summer days, t-shirt stuck to my back with sweat. The shop was crammed with these sunburnt bodies, the air was hot and damp, uh, but my skin got all sort of goosebumpy as I stared at limp tuna sandwiches and grey looking sushi platters. Sticky hand slid open the fridge doors for a pack of tinnies or a five quid bottle of wine. <laughs> my skin was raw with a fresh sting of the sun on my, my shoulders and my nose. Onions. I need onions. I was going to make that pasta that Kira always liked. I uh, made it on her anniversary once. It was a homemade version of one she always would get from the wee Italian place around the corner from her flat. Fuck. How fucking depressing. I mean, cooking some fucking pasta to feel some way connected to your ex-girlfriend. Jesus. So I threw some in the basket along with some greasy looking dough balls from the reduced section. And then as I turned the corner on my way to the checkouts, stood in front of me, there was this shelf laden with citrus fruits. Lemons. For some reason, I felt sort of stuck to the spotlight, like glued to it. They were brighter than I'd ever remembered lemons being, and bigger, huge, and juicy, and weirdly inviting. And then I felt something proper strange, like a sort of pulsing. In my dick. 
And this wasn't some random schoolboy boner. I mean, they normally creep up on me when I've been daydreaming about the girl from the cafe with a massive tit. It's not when I'm staring at a rack of fucking lemons at a heaving supermarket in the middle of the afternoon. But I wasn't even struck by the confusion. I was just blindingly horny. Gel there to the spot where a massive raging boner aggressively hard, rock hard in the middle of a fucking Tesco metro. I reached out to grab one of them, hold it in my hands. It was perfectly weighted and firm, gloriously bright, more aesthetically pleasing than the bashed ones it lay next to. Truly, this was a gift from God, not only to me and the other customers in Tesco on this fine day, but to the entirety of humanity. It was a nice fucking lemon, okay? I could feel its waxy flesh in between my fingers and imagined what it would be like to taste it. And the bitterness, the sweetness, the sting. I let out a small moan, fuck, I couldn't help but bite my lip, but I sort of it came to realising there was a woman standing next to me trying to reach a grapefruit from the shelf below. What the fuck had just happened? What the fuck was going on? Excuse me, I need to get in there. Excuse me. Are you deaf, mate? I couldn't get words out. My dick was alarmingly hard now, swelled in my boxes and thumping like a drum. My grip grew clammy around the lemon. I needed to get out of there. Ah, uh, the woman had obviously noticed the growing bulge in my shorts and her face had crumpled into a disgusted grimace. I dropped my basket and made a beeline for the exit and I started running. Running past the security guard as he grew fainter and fainter in the background, shouting after me, Have you paid for that, mate? Faster and faster, running past the banks, past the bars and the shops and the people, past the girl from the cafe with the massive tits out, smoking a fag on her lunch break. She cut me a look as she took a drag, but I didn't stop. I kept running faster and faster, past the chicken shop and the travel agents, past the people and the dogs and the bins and the cars, uh, running, souls hitting the pavement hard. I made it to my flat and started fumbling around in my pocket for the key. I ran up the stairs, four floors, two steps at a time, bounded up towards my door. I slammed it open and shoved it shut. I came inside and tried to catch my breath with laboured inhales and sputtering exhales. I rested my head against the wall to try and stop the room from spinning. <sighs> When I looked down, I realised that I was very much still erect. I went into my room and sat on the edge of my bed, still holding the lemon in my hands. Sat there neatly in my palms, I inspected it more closely. It was dimpled and imperfectly shaped with a detailed porous skin oh, I felt the blood rushing to my dick I was glowing burning begging me to touch it I reached down and started wanking oh it felt primal Instinctually, I lifted the fruit to my nose and smelt the sweetness lurking beneath its thick rind. I could feel myself growing to a climax already. Ah, I bit down into it, <laughs> wedging the pith in between my teeth. I could feel the juice running down my chin like blood from a vampire's fangs trickling onto my thighs as I bit down harder. I let out a moan and I felt myself come deep and raw and new. And I held myself in that moment of complete Euphoria.
when I opened my eyes, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Uh, my shorts around my ankles. Uh, the sunlight is streaming in from the window. Silent, uh, except from the sound of a dog barking in the street below and my quiet, muffled breathing. The flesh of the lemon still wedged between my teeth. <laughs> my dick was limp in my hand. And I stared deep into myself, snapping out of the stupor, confronted with this image and seeing myself with complete clarity. What the fuck had just happened? Still